We're going to do a lab now where we actually run the MinIO server in a local environment. We're going to run MinIO in single node, single drive mode. This gives us the environment that we need to be able to learn within without having to set up something that's more suited for a production environment. I'm going to start on the MinIO webpage, min.io, and I'm going to look at the download button in the top right hand corner. This brings you to our download portal where you can select your platform of choice and get instructions for being able to download the MinIO server and MinIO client. We'll need both. The architecture dropdown depends on your actual hardware. So if you are using, for example, a Raspberry Pi, that's going to be using an ARM type processor, so you would need to use the ARM64 architecture. For Mac users, we support both the AMD64, which is going to be an Intel processor, or ARM64, which is going to be the newer M1 processors, also known as Apple Silicon. Make sure you select the correct architecture based on your specific hardware. There are ways for being able to look up what processor you have within the Mac OS context if you don't already know. I would recommend searching the official Mac documentation around identifying your architecture so that you download the correct one. Now I'm on Linux and I'm using an Intel processor, so I'm going to use the AMD64 ARC. I'm going to download the MinIO server and set it to executable. I'm not going to run this last line yet. I'd like for the, us to do that together instead. So I'm in my training folder. This is just a folder I created on my local drive. And I have three items. Data, which is just an empty folder that I'm going to use for MinIO storage. MC, the MinIO client. And I can run MC help to see the various commands that are available. And some syntax examples and the MinIO server. And by running help, I also get syntax examples, some parameters, and some examples to run with. Now what I want to do is run the MinIO server against this data directory. So I'm going to run this command. Let's actually take a look at this in detail before I run it. So we start with the MinIO server command, which is just telling the MinIO executable that you're starting the server process. For Windows users, the only real difference here is that you have .exe. We have to specify a path to the folder to use. This does have to be an empty folder path for things to work. You cannot specify a folder that has existing data inside of it unless that data was already created within the context of a single node, single drive MinIO deployment. For Windows, you are going to specify a Windows style path, colon slash or d colon slash. On Linux or Unix systems, it's going to be a Linux Unix path. Now, the console address parameter is technically optional. By default, MinIO selects a dynamic port address for the web console. And the idea here is that we don't know what ports are available on your system, so picking a random one increases the likelihood that the server process can start on an unknown system. Now, I know my local host, and I know this port isn't being used, so I can safely run it. You can run MinIO in a containerized environment as well. We support both Podman and Docker, Podman is a Red Hat Enterprise Linux alternative to Docker that is API compatible, although it is still in development, so you may need to use Docker in order to get successful results. We're going to do Docker or Podman run. We have to specify the ports that we want to forward. By default, the container will not automatically route traffic from the local host system to the container system. The container is actually on its own separate virtual network. So we have to say, well, I want to forward port 9000 on the container, to port 9000 on my local machine. We do this also for port 9090, the console address. This is also why you kind of want to specify a static console address because otherwise it would be dynamic, chosen on startup, and you'd have no idea what port to forward. The dash V flag mounts a local folder or volume to the container at a specified path. So here I am mounting the slash menu slash data folder on my local machine to the slash data folder on the container. I'm using quay.io as our image repository, although this could be Docker Hub, and I'm specifying the min.io organization and the min.io image. With that image, we're running the server command, so this is equivalent to running min.io server. We're using the slash data folder on the container, which maps to min.io slash data on my local machine, and we're setting the console address to port 9090. This will do effectively the same thing as running the command just using the binary. And if you prefer to go with the containerized approach, this command should run without too much trouble.
So let me run this command and let's take a look at the output. There's a couple of things on the screen. We can see that it's automatically configured the number of API requests per node based on my system memory. We talked a little bit about this earlier and how MinIO selects the amount of API requests based on system memory. This is just my local system and I've got a couple of gigs of free space so my system can safely handle a little under 100 concurrent requests at a time. The IAM subsystem loading is for identity and access management. We're using the MinIO built-in identity manager, so this is fast. It's also an empty deployment, so there's nothing to load. This first block of information is the S3 API listen endpoint. MinIO will list all of the local network adapters at which the MinIO S3 API can be reached. So I have my local network address and then a local host or loopback address, 127001, both of which listening at port 9000, which is the default for the MinIO API. The root user and root password are using the defaults. If you look back at the download page, you'll remember that MinIO root user and MinIO root password environment variables. You can set these to override the defaults. And in fact, you should in just about any environment outside of very early local testing. But that's exactly what we're doing in this lab, so we can use the defaults for now. The console block is talking about the MinIO web console. And the only thing that changes here is the port 9090. Now if I open a browser to port 9000, it will redirect to port 9090 automatically. So you don't necessarily need to remember both ports. It's enough to just know that MinIO listens at 9000, and if you hit that address at, with your browser, you will be redirected to the console. Now there's a command line example here using MC alias set. The MinIO client, or MC, uses this concept of aliases, or a nickname, for being able to operate on a MinIO deployment. So we're going to need to set a nickname for our local deployment before we can start running commands against it. Finally, you'll notice that there's an info box here about running an older version of MinIO. You may see this on your MinIO deployments. We have a fairly rapid release schedule. It doesn't mean that you have to upgrade. Instead, you should look at our GitHub repository, examine the changes that have happened over time, and if you see changes that are relevant to you, test the latest stable version in a staging environment first before applying them in production. MinIO never recommends doing blind production upgrades. You should always test and validate everything locally first. Now, my current MinIO server is tied to this shell session, so I can't run a command here. I'm going to flop over to this other tab, and I'm going to try to run this command. Let's break this down a little bit further. The MC alias set command is what sets a new alias or nickname for the MinIO deployment although this could be any S3 compatible deployment. We have to set the alias or nickname. Here it's MinIO dev. For the lab, I'm going to use local. I have to specify the URL where I can reach this MinIO deployment. I'm using localhost, but let's say I deployed this MinIO server onto a Raspberry Pi on my network, or maybe a laptop that I have sitting around, or maybe I've actually got a rack-mounted box. I would specify the URL of that box as long as I can reach that URL from this machine. Finally, I have to specify an access key and a secret key of a user on the MinIO deployment. Here, I'm using MinIO admin, MinIO admin, since this is a fresh deployment and only the root user exists. So let's run this command. I've added the local alias successfully, and if I run the following command, mc admin info local, this is going to return administrative level information on the deployment. I'm going to get a summary of the host name of the deployment, its uptime, and the version of MinIO that it's running. This is very basic high-level information, but it's sufficient within the lab for us to verify that our local MC command line tool is connected to this local deployment, which means we can now start running commands.